Hey, folks, welcome to the American Adversaries Drive Time on News Talk 660 WORL. That is Lair Adams. I am Christopher Hart. The number is 407-774-8255. And we are privileged to have in the studio with us this afternoon, as promised, Congressman Dan Webster. Let's get right to it. Congressman, thank you for being with us tonight. Hey, great to be on. Uh, it's, so it's always great to have you, especially because you come down in the studio. We appreciate that because I know you have to go out of your way. I mean, your office is out there in Winter Garden. So we appreciate you coming in here. Uh, uh, let's get right down to it. Uh, the, I suppose that you know that there are a lot of people who are uh, displeased with the vote that you took uh, uh, in Congress uh, to uh, re- reopen the government and lift, lift the debt ceiling. Um, let me just start this way. When I do something that, that perplexes or that my nephews uh, perceive is uh, not well thought out, uh, they say, what were you thinking? So uh, on behalf of me and our audience, what, sir, were you thinking? Here's what I was thinking. First of all, if uh, you remember the sequestration and remember the fact that uh, the White House closed uh, to tours and there was uh, a thought that uh, everybody would stand in long lines to get on uh, airplanes and the FAA was going to shut down a bunch of towers and all those things were promised because the president is punitive. He wants to punish us for the things that happened. So now the government shutdown comes along, which closes, I don't know, 15, 20 percent of the government uh, the, the, uh, under the um, uh, amount of money that we spend. About a, a third or about a half of the discretionary money is defense. That stayed open. And then the rest is uh, another, another, so that's a sixth of the government and a good part of that shutdown. So... Uh, the next day, there were signs, barricades in front of uh, the National Monuments, which are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, no one's ever down there. I mean, you can go anytime you want. It's you can walk sidewalk. through them. So they put sure. there, yes. Yeah, so they had uh, guards there yeah, we, try to we, stop us. We, we talked about these things. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you know that Mount Rushmore uh, was. They put was, the cones out yeah. so you couldn't park your car. And then, then they barricaded the road. It was a state road. And uh, they did that because somebody might see the monument, and they wanted to punish people. Fortunately, they had a blizzard, uh, and the snow plows happened to push the snow and the barricades over into the ravine, <laughs> and it opened back up. Not just, just happened to. I yes, they just uh, <laughs> stumbled across them, and they just happened to be in the way. So all I can tell you is this. that's There is a difference between a government shutdown and a default. The default is determined by the... Treasury Secretary, nothing we can do about that. Right. And the day we default is the day we hand the checkbook of the government on cash we have left over to the President of the United States. All of it. Right. Not 15%, all of it, including the two-thirds of the, of the uh, mandatory spending. And he's already said, Social Security, Medicare, military pay, paying our debt. He wasn't sure whether he could pay those or not. You know what? I think he would have done it. I think he would have punished people. I think he would have made us pay. Now, I'm sure the Republicans wouldn't blame, but either way, I think the point was I did not trust the president enough to hand him the checkbook alone. He would have had it with no guidance. He would have done it all on his own. I understand that line of thought. So that's number one. Okay, well, I understand that line of thought, Um, but... It was it was a free vote uh, in that sense. It, your vote wasn't required for it to happen, and the uh, the people out here needed your vote more than the Democrats and John Boehner did. Yeah, well, I wasn't giving my vote to John Boehner. I wasn't giving my vote to the Democrats. Okay, I was voting the way I thought I should, and I wasn't willing to hand the checkbook over to the president. That's number one. Number two, I want to tell you what we got. I, I would suspect the Democrats have buyer's remorse today. Well, because, I've read some stories to that effect. And I'll tell you yeah. why. Yeah. We are now going to conference on something that we could not, from the summer forward, go to conference on, the budget. Paul Ryan is our leader. Patty Murray is their leader. And they're actually meeting. They're going to conference. Let me tell you what we're conferencing. We're conferencing our number, the lower number, the sequestered number. Not the higher number with taxes that the, uh, that the uh, Senate had in their budget, but our number. Second thing is, let me tell you what's on the table in that budget. We repealed Obamacare in that budget. We 
do tax reform in that budget. And now you've got the chairman in the Senate and House meeting to do tax reform because they're sort of following the budget, but they're also out there as, as separate entities doing that. Then, not only that, we have not only those two items, but we also have spending reductions in ours. We have entitlement reform in ours. Yeah. Those are all on the table, and we're using our number. That would have never happened. That would have never happened had we gone down the same road. So Do those, you believe that so the, those two things. One is we actually are meeting and talking about these right. issues when before we were sending these same issues down to the Senate and the president, uh, the uh, the leader of the Senate would swat them away. They wouldn't even vote on them. They'd table them or whatever they is they do down there. Use their rules to just do them in. Right. We never got a chance to even vote on them. So here we have entitlement reform, Obamacare, uh, our lower number. The idea of tax reform all on the table in a negotiation where the Senate is actually showing up. I, I think that is a, an awesome thing. And the, couple that with the fact that I wasn't willing for the president to basically take the checkbook. There was no plan B either. Once this vote took place, there was nothing to replace it. Nothing. We would have just been there at his disposal to take the checkbook and, and, and throw out numbers or hold back numbers or delay payments on anything he wanted. I I couldn't do that. Well, do you, just real quickly, uh, there's a front page uh, story in the Wall Street Journal today entitled Budget Discord Simmers on Left. Uh, and they're talking about what you're talking about, that they're not at all pleased with the deal that they ended up getting. And that at their starting point as they go into this conference committee. Um, so you, you make a point, you make an excellent point there.